So hi, everyone. Nice to be here. Um, as Christoph said, uh, last time I went on such a stage with an audience of this size, I was carrying a guitar and was rather jumping and <laughs> running around. It will be a bit differ different today. Um, this is my first uh, speech of this type on, on this type of, uh, of an event, and I'm very excited to be here and to uh, share a bit a different way of approaching APIs because I'm not a developer. I have never been in IT. I'm more in the uh, department in between business and IT. And uh, yes, I'm working for Euler Hermes. So how many people in the room know Euler Hermes and what we're doing? Three, I know. Three, <laughs> one, two, three, okay. That's, sorry? You deliver parcels. <laughs> no, um, unfortunately, we're also not the luxury brand Hermes. Um, <laughs> no, not exactly. Um, we are a credit insurance company. We are actually the world leading credit insurance company. And on top of credit insurance, we um, have bonding and fidelity insurance. And now how many people in the room know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> ah, a couple. That's not bad. Um, I did that because um, I'd like to introduce, when you hear me talking like that and you don't understand what is that, um, you're basically in the shoes of our business people. When I come talking to them about APIs and Swagger and REST and JSON and stuff, they're like, what the hell? Um, so, um, yeah, um, that's so much for the introduction. Um, quickly, uh, Euler Hermes, we are not exactly a startup. We are more than 100 years old. Um, we are in the B2B sector. It's quite a special industry. Uh, we are a global market leader. We have 850 billion euros of um, coverage that we provide to companies. It's quite amazing uh, money. Uh, we do this with 6,000 employees, and we are part of Allianz, which is second largest insurer worldwide. Um, we are in API since 2007. Um, we haven't had any idea about the term API. We called it web services. And we just took what we had in our internal systems and we tried to expose it <coughs> to our customers. It didn't work that well because it was quite complex to, to get into these. Um, then we improved in 2012, so we put in place a dedicated consulting team. We revamped the, the API interfaces. Uh, we did a lot more on documentation, and uh, then we did a lot better. Um, so we have uh, about 300 um, happy customers um, mm -hmm. live on this existing SOAP API. Um, however, I must say the current setup is not really scalable, and that's why we're currently really revamping <coughs> all our IT into microservice, into REST APIs, and we are just about to build a developer portal. That's why I was talking to Christoph, and uh, that's why I also felt like, ah, I don't even have a developer portal that I could show you. Am I really the right person for this? But um, yeah. And next, I thought it was quite um, important to quickly introduce what is credit insurance about. So um, imagine you're the gray company and your customer is the green company. So you sell um, whatever goods with an invoice and uh, you give him 60 days to pay that invoice. Um, that's nice. However, um, if that customer fails before he can pay, then Unfortunately, your money is gone, and there's nothing you can do about it because he's just unable to pay. Um, so that's where we step in, and we ensure that transaction, and then we would pay in the event that this would happen to you. <coughs> the way we do it is that we um, provide um, individual coverage for each of your customers, oh, sorry. and we do that by looking at the the, the financial stability of your customers, and we continuously monitor if that changes, and we provide that information to you. Of course, when you 
the great company, you have a large customer database, then mm. um, the process can be quite um, vast because it's a lot of um, back and forth communications and that's actually where our API comes in. Next, um, I don't have much technical things to share, but I have the end customers of the APIs, their user experience to share. Because when we look at a uh, typical B2B sales process <laughs> in corporate companies, uh, there's a number of people involved with like special jobs, special roles, and special IT that are, they are using. So um, in this case, Mia is using Salesforce to create leads, and then Katie is going to see these people. They, she has her own software to, to do that. And then uh, she's collaborating with Sabine, and uh, because Sabine is the <coughs> expert to provide credit tracking, um, solvability checking, and um, sometimes she's supported by David, who is an external broker, having the relationship with the credit insurance company. And finally, if something goes wrong with the payment, mm -hmm. then there's Mark, he's an external lawyer, and he has his own software again. And of course, in all this, the um, API, it's pretty much everywhere in that process because we need to look mm -hmm. at the process end to end. So we need to look at all of these people and provide what they need to all of them. So um, when we do that, um, how do we get there? Because um, there's one thing when I um, read about developer portals and when I listen um, to speeches, there's very often the, the say that um, your developer portal needs to allow a developer to go there and discover your API in like five minutes. And if it's great, then he can go and develop, um, which is right. Um, however, it's not all of the story. Because in, in our case, we have the business team. Um, they are really experts in their domain and they know exactly what they need to do their job well. Um, but they don't know much about APIs. And then if they want to improve their software with the um, information and uh, features coming from their um, credit insurance company, for example, they are not just talking to a developer and say, hey, let's go. They will first submit a project um, to the CEO, which is in this case Nina, and they need to convince Nina to invest in that because it's a costly thing. So, And then, um, typically, uh, Nina will understand that business case. <coughs> she's not an API expert as well, so she's hiring somebody who is expert. Um, very often, this is external people. They jump in, they are brilliant developers, they know every about, everything about tech, but nothing at all of credit insurance, of course. And that's what I want to emphasize on. You have a number of people involved in the overall um, um, process, and they have uh, very different needs. So for example, the business people, they need to understand the business value of the API, what you can really <coughs> provide to them, which is helpful for their day-to-day um, -day <coughs> business. They need to understand the functional API catalogs, which really are the features that they can get. Um, to have a real understanding, what's helpful for them is having concrete use cases, looking not really at the, uh, the API design, but rather at what will that do in their screens of their systems afterwards. It's like <coughs> you have a task list, or you have an alert system, or you have a contact. Um, to give them really an uh, yeah, impression what they can achieve with the technology. Um, then they also need to, us to support them in estimating the efforts for that project to get then the approval of Nina to get that project done. And uh, finally, also when the whole thing has been done, they are still the ones that suffer if something goes wrong and they are also the ones that need to be informed when there's new features available. So we need a communication channel to these business people in their 
particular language. <coughs> and uh, of course, we also need to provide them a second level support where they can call if something is really not understandable or really going wrong. On the other hand, <coughs> the uh, Nitin, our developer, he has very different requirements, of course. He should have some tutorials that introduce the business context to him. He should not become a business expert because he will work together with those business experts, but we can help him um, upskill rapidly. Um, we need to explain on our portal what are the key legal requirements because uh, when we are talking about implementing a number of APIs, he needs to do it right. He needs to cover the full process to not risk that uh, there's a gap somewhere and they discover it in uh, uh, way too far. <laughs> um, we should also highlight the business consequences of a functional error. So if the, the API returns, um, you're working on the wrong policy number, um, then he should understand it's not sufficient to just code that um, the, the task is put on another policy number should understand that, well, if you on this number, then you're not covered. That's not so good. And uh, so what we <coughs> really want to do is have uh, a clear link between the APIs and the, the technical documentation and the related <coughs> functional use cases to make business and IT work really together in this. And then, of course, um, there's the technical tasks uh, I won't go too much into, deep into the details of that. Really, the idea of the BizDev portal is enable a team of business and IT people in our customers and our partners' um, companies to collaborate, to have something really valuable end-to-end uh, -end for the end users, um, compliant with the legal requirements, of course and also including the professional support when it's needed. So if I have some key messages um, in that, um, you should know how your stakeholders are and you need to address them in their language so that they get really um, what they need. As far, as far as I'm concerned, if you don't get the buy-in of the business people, then probably the developer won't even have a look at the portal. And that's quite key. And uh, anyway, the project will only succeed if it's collaborative between business and IT. We have seen far too many large IT projects where there was a huge <laughs> business requirement done and then it's handed over to the IT guys and they code it and then months later they discover <laughs> it's just not working. Um, yeah, and that's it. Thank you. <coughs> and uh, just... <laughs> <laughs> so, I think we have time for questions. Yes, do we? Yeah. Do we have questions? Yeah. More of an observation than a question, but it, it's really nice to see this. It ties in with some of the stuff we did in our talk just now about um, the, our end-to-end -end service guys. Exactly the yeah. same um, use case or. or, or user need, unmet user need that you're talking about. Um, and one of the things that we toyed with was our, our thing's called the developer hub. Mm -hmm. And we heard at least one entrepreneur go, oh, well, that's not for me, because that's for developers. So we were even toying with the idea of changing the name of, of the hub to make it clear that yeah. we do want to attract yeah. non-technical people to it. So we're doing a lot of work now. And all of those things you just said about using the language of the business, showing how you can drill down from an end-to-end business use case into API usage as well, so it's, it's really, Brilliant. exactly, exactly <laughs> what we're seeing. Thank you, guys. Fantastic. Okay. No other questions? Okay. Um, Sure. 
Yeah, the, the difficulty is indeed that you have to serve um, all kinds of people, companies. And I, I like what you guys did with the, the questionnaires that pop up to help you address and, and find out that right language, which will then serve to the majority of people. I think that probably there's no magic solution to cover them all, but it's really a, a, a learning journey to, to understand which is the right level, which is the, the wording that, that fits, and which is really the level of, of, of the depth of um, documentation also that you need to provide them. Good point. That's a good point. Basically, what we provide to all of our customers is uh, um, a visible portal. It's like a banking, online banking thing, but for the insurance. And they are used to the screens that we provide them. And indeed, we did a research um, how to improve, and that's what they said. Give us links between that EOLIS application and the API features. So then we can understand what you're really talking about. Because that's the problem with APIs for the business. They are not visible. They, they don't know how to, to grab them. So did you find a solution for that? Did you, did you give them some, some link? Or we need to put in place that project. So <laughs> but definitely, this is one of the elements that we want to do. Yeah. Well, indeed, we have both. We have yeah. customers directly using, and then we have partners like Salesforce yeah. who would integrate the thing for the end customer. And then that's yet another story because then you need to teach that partner how to properly apply the process so that, that they can resell the application to a, a large number of end users. One more question. Yeah, I have a question. Like we, we are basically in a similar situation where we want to see how we can get make the portal so that it's both interesting for the developers as well as for the users. <coughs> um, so I understand why you would want to do this, uh, but how are you going to do it? Like, do you have a, do you have an idea of how you can make it so that they don't get lost in a whole lot of things that they don't need? Well, basically, I believe, um, I don't have the magic solution yet, but I do believe that we will have a number of personas that we define on the most probable use cases, and around these we will build that journey. Uh, it goes with product packaging, because we have these different product types already that we need to, to put differently. Um, and then try to start with the typical process that they would work on and uh, provide them with ideas on, on how that would fit in their screen. And from there on have a link then to the relevant APIs that are involved 
and then you go to the API ref and all the technical details that you need to code it. Well, I would say we will have a, a list of APIs, uh, like just normal list, so that you can also discover it. But for the business people, I would rather look at the typical processes and give them ideas on how it fits into screens afterwards. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.